And we're live. Hello, hello, everybody. I'm Katie Phillips. I'm the founder of the School of Self Love. And it's my honor to be with you today in today's third interview. Today we're with Marion Stewart. Hi, Marion. Good morning. Good, good afternoon for us. Good morning in New York. <laughs> uh, so, Marion's our third expert interview today as part of the My Menopause interview series. And oh my gosh, this series is already completely blowing my mind. I have learned so much in the last couple of days, and we've still got three days ahead. So, and we've got Marion, who I know is just an absolute wealth of information. I'm so glad to have you part of this series. I don't think it'd be the same without your voice taking part. Marion, I'm going to uh, read out your bio because I think um, if I don't read it out, there's no way you're going to better get all this fabulousness across. <laughs> um, so let me introduce you to the world. Uh, Marion Stewart is a renowned and multi-award winning expert in PMS and menopause. She's a pioneer in the field of non-drug medicine and is on a mission to enhance and make a difference to the lives of others. Marion has written 27 self-help books. I don't know where you found the time for that and uh, is a regular contributor to the Daily Mail. Despite there being a wealth of information online, so many stories are conflicting, some even with vested interests. Marion feels passionate that women should be well-informed and have access to a process they can trust that will reclaim their well-being. Using her years of knowledge and expertise, she coaches women in understanding the information, tools and techniques needed to get well to the point that they're able to be completely symptom-free. Her menopause program has been successfully helping women to overcome menopause symptoms for 27 years. Marion was awarded a British Empire Medal in the Queen's New Year Honours List in 2018 for service to drug education following her successful seven-year campaign in conjunction with the experts at the Angelus Foundation, which she established in memory of her daughter, Hester. So, Marion, welcome, welcome. Thank you. And before we start, we're going to have to talk about the, the doll to your right. <laughs> Who is she? She's very happy. She's actually one of the puppets I use with my granddaughter, but we call her Millie Menopause. And um, just because women do somehow go inside their shells at the time of the menopause. And I think sometimes when I, especially when I'm talking to my granddaughter, you can say funny things that you wouldn't say as you, but through a puppet's voice. And yeah. so sometimes we have this little character called Millie Menopause, who's completely batty, but she suffers from everything. And she can talk about vaginal dryness, and she can talk about <laughs> the fact that she's having a panic attack, and all the different things that, that sometimes we bottle up and don't want to tell other people. And so I think that, um, it's just, I think what you're doing is amazing from a student perspective. Mm. Lots of different people who've got completely different experience in the field of menopause so that women all over the world can come to understand that this is a transition mm. and they can be free to speak about it. It's okay. And it has a beginning and it has an end. And you can come out the end of it feeling better than you can remember whole new beginning mm. and it would be amazing because we're living so much longer than we ever did before so you can go on and reinvent yourself and do wonderful things in your life if you're feeling well so my mission is to help women to understand how to get to that good place and that opens all sorts of doors and they can do whatever they want and embrace their lives i love it well, so what was it specifically that had you begin to want to start helping women through the menopause well, her, go back a bit, because in, to the 80s, when I was married to a doctor and he set up, with, in conjunction with some other doctors, while I was on maternity leave with our second baby, he was setting up the British Society for Nutritional Medicine. And they had 10,000 medical papers on nutrition, and they didn't think I had much to do. So they gave me them to sort into conditions. And I found 200 on PMS, and it was all non-drug. So I put together a program for women based on those papers with PMS. And to cut a very long story short, I trained my husband's nurse, the local journalist got to hear about it. And before I knew it, it was in Cosmo, the news of the world. And I was kind of literally drag screaming onto breakfast television, <laughs> completely quaking in my boots. I mean, I just wasn't, you know, I, I, that wasn't something I really wanted to do. I was just a mom and a healthcare person who had a kind of low-key life, but, it, but there were other plans 
for me. And so before I knew it, we had probably on some days when we had media coverage, because going back in those days, it was completely new. We had probably over 2000 letters a day. And the postman, in fact, the, the manager of the post office used to arrive in his three-piece suit with all these sacks of mail, a bit like Santa, saying, what on earth is going on? But it was actually really sad because when I, it took me hours and hours and hours, if you can imagine, to open the post. And I would just be in floods of tears because the women were suffering so terribly. And so we put together a program which helped women with PMS. And we also, because we saw we were being successful, we, came, we wanted to know, well, why are we being successful? Why are we managing to turn these symptoms off? And eventually we did five separate studies on different populations of women with the hospital, the local family planning clinic. We did something in the workplace at Kimberly Clark, the local psychiatric daycare center, as well as our own patients. And we found that many of the women, between 50 to 80% of the women had low levels of things like magnesium, iron, zinc, essential fatty acids, calcium, vitamin D. And when we corrected that, they got better. And it was, and, and obviously we did other things as well. We managed to do things like uh, help them to exercise, adjust their lifestyle, adjust, adjust their diet. And so in 1990, I was sitting at my desk. I remember exactly when I read the first paper that was published in the British Medical Journal on menopause. And it was doing a whole load of natural things. And it compared the women to a, women taking hormone replacement therapy. And the ones taking the natural things had the same changes in the lining of the vagina as the ones taking HRT. And I thought, wow, here we go. I can now start talking about menopause. I had a feeling that it would help women going through the menopause because having low levels of nutrients is never going to get any better unless you learn how to address it. So, but then all the medical publications started to come and now literally there are tens of thousands of medical patients medical papers to support the non-drug approach and there are literally dozens and dozens of great tools that you can use but it's just knowing what those tool, tools are because the internet makes that for a very crowded place and obviously different agendas and it's so hard women have been up all night and they're suffering with insomnia and brain fog how on earth do they find out and so that's where i come in really i interpret for women what really works what science shows works what's safe and effective and what they can do to help themselves to get through the transition out the other end i love it i love it i love it so can you let's just rewind for a second before we go forward again why do women actually get symptoms during perimenopause and menopause they get symptoms because two main reasons one is well first of all women are traditionally carers they care for everybody and look after everyone else first and we're usually left to last and that's not great so when you get to if you have a baby or two and you do some breastfeeding unfortunately mother nature in her wisdom makes sure the baby gets all the best of the nutrients and you're the one that gets left high and dry so as you get older and you approach the perimenopause that's not going to get better in fact it gets worse unless you learn how to address the balance. And that's the important thing. So on one hand, we know that women going into perimenopause have very often got low levels of important nutrients. And that impairs the brain chemistry. It stops your brain chemistry from working normally. So it's, imagine a conductor in an orchestra who's trying to conduct with one arm. And that's effectively, you go into economy mode and you can't function normally. So you don't have much energy, your sense of humor goes, your libido goes, and you just become a shadow of your former self. So that's what's going on on a, tri on a nutritional level. And then added to that, you've got falling levels of estrogen. So the ovaries aren't meant to go on working because 100 years or so ago, we weren't living much past 50. And so it, it didn't really matter. But now when 50 represents midlife for many of us, we want to go on feeling good. We want our skin, our hair and our nails to still glow. We want to feel ageless. We don't want to feel achy and 90 before our time. And we certainly don't want to be melting with hot flushes and not being able to sleep at night. So we need to replace the missing estrogen. And again, Mother Nature steps in and has provided us with natural estrogen and food. So if we can, and, and it's structurally so similar to our ordinary estrogen when you look at it under the microscope. So we can fool our brain into thinking we've got normal circulating estrogen again. So the factory that made all the cells that protected us mm -hmm. and kept our symptoms at bay 
goes back into production. And that's really important. So I'm guessing if somebody already has a diet that is high in estrogen, they're probably going to sail through menopause not really noticing it, as opposed to a woman that has to change her diet once she starts losing estrogen? I think that's part of it, as long as they've got good nutrient levels in their body. And in fact, some of my PMS patients from years ago come back at the time of the perimenopause and we just tweak what they're doing, change their diet a little bit, change the supplements a little bit, and they literally sail through the menopause. So they don't fall into this great big black hole that so many people go in. And the saddest thing is that women believe, for the most part, that menopause is the beginning of the end. They don't understand that they can get themselves out, they can do a U-turn, they can feel really well again, and they can get their mojo back, they can get back to feeling better than they can remember. They believe that this is all part of the aging process, and it's a foregone conclusion. And that's the thing that I just want women to understand that it isn't at all, and that you can really get back to feeling good again. You've just got to get the right knowledge and obviously implement it. It's not obviously enough, enough having the knowledge, but you've got to put it into practice. But most women want to. And I'm finding, well, certainly I've, over time, I've been treating women on a one-to-one -one basis. But these days, I'll tell you, I have a, a huge group of women I'm taking through a menopause journey, a natural journey. And I'm doing that because I literally got overwhelmed when I came back from doing my Angelus journey that you mentioned earlier to raise awareness about legal highs. I didn't have my TV show anymore. I didn't have my column in the mail at the time. And I was kind of looking and thinking, well, where am I most needed? And I looked and I started helping women with menopause symptoms in 1990. And this was 2016, so 26 years later. I didn't see any better help for women going through the menopause. So GPs were still not educated, practice nurses for the most part, and women were being left to fend for themselves. And so I decided that I would make some films because I'd been making lots of films over the years, just some little self-help films. And I met up with, I was in America at the time, and I didn't have a network there. And someone introduced me to a woman who was making Facebook Live films as well as ordinary films. And so she was running a course, funnily enough, the next day, if you believe in coincidences. And so I went to do her workshop. And it was during that workshop that I realized that I could set up a community on Facebook. I'd always wanted to set up a community for women to enlighten them, but I didn't have to get funding or wait. I could do it that day, so I did. I made this ridiculous little film on my phone. I was thinking, oh God, where's the makeup girl? And it was just you know, me naked in front of my phone. And she made me promise I'd do two more films in the next two weeks, and I did. And within three months, over a million women saw those films. And I was just blown away. I was just blown away with the suffering, apart from anything else, and the number of emails I had. And so I set up a Facebook group, The Natural Menopause, making the midlife switch. And We've now got over, over 9,000 members. And I'm trying to take those women through a journey. And it, sometimes it gets a bit difficult, a bit like a, a runaway train. So we did a focus group last summer. And some of the women wanted more help. So I set up a six-week boot camp. And that's been amazing. I thought, because my program is five months. And we know that over 90% of women are symptom-free within five months. So I thought within six weeks, I could teach women in a group how to put together their program. So they know exactly what to do according to their symptoms. But I didn't dream that it would help them to overcome their symptoms in that time as well. And we've been having, we're on our sixth boot camp now, and we've been having amazing success. And it's so incredible for me to watch them. And I know by the time they get to week four, they're just completely changing. And they come out the end of it. It's like a second bloom. And you can see they look different. They feel, they sound different. And it's just amazing to be able to... You know, without having a magic wand, this is just a really good method of helping to wake women up and so that they can refuel, and it is a bit like a refuel, and then they can go on to do the great things that they want to do or maybe things they didn't ever dream that they would do. I have some patients who go off and become healers or other healthcare practitioners or they go and do charity work or something. One woman recently even decided to take a gap year with her husband and just went traveling around the world. I mean, it was just amazing. Whereas before, she'd been curled up in a ball at home. 
and had to leave work because she was so stressed and couldn't hold down her job anymore. And that's the other thing. In the workplace, we did a survey last year and we found that 84% of women feel that their work is affected because of their brain fog yeah. and, and their, the fact that they can't sleep at night. And many of them, 75% said it was for over a week a month. It's just horrendous. So it, it doesn't have to be that way. And I just feel that women have a right to the information so that they can get themselves back into really good shape again. Absolutely. Oh my God, you're doing amazing things in the world. What's the, um, what's the fastest and best way for a woman to overcome her menopause symptoms? Well, I think she's got to learn to meet her nutrient needs and that takes a few months. And she needs to get her estrogen, her hormones back into an optimum range as well. Um, we, I, we just recently did another focus group and we found from my group that some of the women couldn't afford my boot camp. And so I put together a 14 day menopause empowerment program, which is a whole load of videos. Uh, so every day is a new video with specific instructions from me and some written material. So that, uh, but not a lot. So in 10 minutes a day for 14 days, women can get all the information they need if they want self help. If they want help and they don't think they can do it themselves, then they can come and join my boot camp and work with a group of women. And what we do in there is that they come together. We have a live session every week. Uh, they have a private Facebook group where they can post things. And I go in there every day and answer their questions. And we work together as a team. So, and I really do give them hard time so that they stay on track and commit. Because I think we're so good at going off track and not really good at helping ourselves. And so once you've got the information, it's really important to follow the instructions and implement the changes into your diet. And after a while, mm. it becomes like second nature and it becomes really enjoyable. And because you feel so much better, mm. then, and you're getting the benefit, you've got more energy, you look better, you lose weight without dieting, you get your libido back, your hot flushes and night sweats go. Because all the hot flushes and night sweats are, are the brain trying to kickstart the ovaries back into function. It doesn't get the fact that the ovaries aren't going to work anymore. So you get these thermal surges pumping through your body. That's why you feel a bit weird but before a flush sometimes, because you've got all this going through your system to wake your ovaries up when you put naturally occurring estrogen into your body and you fill those little estrogen receptor sites within your cells, yeah. your brain doesn't need to do that anymore. And so the symptoms literally disappear and you find that you're sleeping again, your brain fog goes, you don't feel anxious anymore and you just start feeling like your old self, if not better. And so it's just, I think the information is there. Mother Nature's given it to us. And it's obviously everyone has their own journey. You can choose how you go through your menopause. And in my opinion, this is definitely the best first line approach. And also in the NICE guidelines, it talks in one of the appendix, it talks about the non-drug approach and the benefits of it. All my work or my books have medical references. So everything I recommend is based on published medical research. And I think it's really important as a first line approach yeah. to do everything natural. Yeah, so why, why, a lot of women are very confused about whether they should go on HRT or not. Like, do they go to their doctor and get drugs? Do they start naturally? Where do they even begin with the natural approach? What would you say to that? Well, in my latest book, I've done a review of HRT, and I did that in conjunction with two world-class experts on the subject of HRT, because obviously I'm not one. Mm -hmm. uh, because I was confused, I think most doctors are confused, and the women themselves are confused. So I've kind of put it in perspective. If you want to take HRT, that's fine, but the medical profession don't really suggest that you take it for the long, the long term. There are lots of side effects that could potentially happen from migraines through to breast cancer, and I think we all know that there is a downside to HRT. In our surveys, we found that women on average gain 18 pounds in the first year. And at a time when you're gaining fat around the middle, it doesn't do much for your self-esteem to put on even more weight. So I would say, if you possibly can, try the natural approach first. Because we know that over 90% of women are completely symptom-free within five months, I don't have a need to use HRT. 
this is an amazing program and it helps, but not only does it help to overcome your symptoms, your menopause symptoms, but the research shows it helps you to prevent things like osteoporosis, the bone thinning disease, dementia, and heart disease. And we're much more predisposed to those when we've got low levels of estrogen. So this is a great news story because women come for help because they're clinging on by their fingernails at the time of menopause. They just don't know what to do. So they're guided to get help because of their symptoms, but they're inadvertently learning how to protect themselves in the long term so that they can stay more healthy. And that's why I love this. I just love what I'm doing because I know that not only are they gonna get the short term gains, but also it's gonna stand them in good stead for the long term so that they can go off and enjoy their lives and you don't have to have the worry about dementia and heart disease and osteoporosis. Because if you do get those conditions, then obviously it changes everything in your life. It changes all the dynamics. And so staying healthy and staying in the driving seat is amazing because they can go off and do lovely spiritual things. They can go off and do anything that makes them joyous and happy. They can be good grandmothers. They can have a sexy relationship with their partner again. They can look in the mirror and say, hello, you're okay. Do you know? And like what they see instead of looking in the mirror and thinking, oh my God, who's that? Yeah, and making the best second half of their life. Exactly. And that's being a downhill slope. This is about how to learn how to look after yourself for the second stage. Yes, and we're working longer, do you know, and women spend all this time climbing the corporate ladder. They don't want to slip down a greasy pole when it comes to menopause. And why should they? That's so unfair. Mm -hmm. Do you know, they should be able to hold their own. They should, they are wise. And in some societies, as you, you'll, you'll hear from other people that you're talking to, as women become elders in the community, they're revered for their wisdom. Well, we're not, do you know, in the Western world, we get invisible and we feel invisible and we feel fat and ugly and inadequate. And we don't need to do that. We can stay feeling vibrant and we can stay, and that's why I, I coined this phrase midlife switch, because you can literally switch from free, feeling stressed, washed out, tired, and irritable, and confused, and in hormone hell, to feeling sexy, wise, intuitive, and with calm and serene, with happy hormones. And that's really, I think, if everyone could choose, that's what she want. It's just a question of how does she get the right information so that she can put it into practice and feel better. Yeah. Yeah, I think the right information and having support, like the support you're providing your clients is uh, really important. When, um, if you're gonna, well, you're, you're you know, coaching and helping a lot of women to follow the natural approach. What are you seeing the, the biggest, most obvious changes a woman is making in her diet to support her through menopause? Do you mean the things that they're doing to bring yeah, about the change? Most obvious changes that a lot of, like the majority of women you're working with, what are the majority having to change about their diet? Okay, so what I get them to do is, first of all, they need to take out of their diet anything that's going to impede the absorption of good nutrients. And there are lots of things that we're consuming that we don't even know are doing that. So, for example, tannin and tea and red wine actually lock on to things like calcium, magnesium, iron, and zinc. So for the short term, this is not a life sentence, but for the short term, they need to have alternative things to certain foods and drinks. So that's the first thing. Second thing is nutrient-dense diet. So it's got to be packed full of good nutrients. And we give them lists of foods that are rich in important nutrients so they can choose the things they like. Then they have, uh, we teach them how to have naturally occurring estrogen. So they have that little and often and they can satisfy the needs of the estrogen receptor sites regularly throughout the day and the evening. So you're constantly falling the brain into thinking you've got normal circulating estrogen. And then as well as that, they take some science-based supplements according to their symptoms. So that will be some vitamins and minerals to help boost the nutrient levels fast track and some supplements that contain naturally occurring estrogen, but they've been through clinical trials and they contain what they say on the packet because there are so many supplements out there that don't unfortunately and that's another thing that i get very angry about because what you see in on high street shelves isn't necessarily what you think you're buying and so it can very often be a waste of money and there's plenty of research to support that and i think that that's actually horrendous and then we get them doing some relaxation because formal relaxation helps to control flushes and anxiety and night sweats 
and also to do some exercise to speed up their metabolism according to their fitness because we want to keep the metabolism going at midlife because it tends to slow down and that's why we get our padding around the middle as well as everything else that goes on. So lots of different things. I describe my program as a pie and all the little slices of the pie, everyone has to have a taste of every slice to make sure they're doing all the things that science shows works at this time. Yeah, that's amazing. Your program is a one-stop shop. Yeah, it's, and there's the women that are coming out the end of it, even on the boot camp, are just, they're saying that it's been life-changing for them, even after the space of a few weeks. So it's, from my perspective, it's just incredible to see what a little bit of knowledge can do and a bit of guidance as well. I mean, some women can do it by themselves. Some women are able to self-help, and that's fine. That's why things like books and my, self, my new Self-Help 14-Day Programme can fill that need. But other women need help because they tend to take a few steps backwards and for whatever reason, either they haven't got the willpower or they just, don't, they just can't do it by themselves. So they need other women as well as me to guide them. And the beauty of the boot camp is you come together as a group. And so you're, for the first time, in fact, we were talking about this in the boot camp the other day, on the se in the second session, I had two women crying because they've never talked about their vaginal dryness to any single living being, not even their best friend before. And here they were in a group of 30 women and everyone was talking about, you know, vaginal dryness, whatever else they had. And they felt that they were, it's okay, it's a safe space to talk about it. And there's this great big light at the end of the tunnel that they can come through and get to overcome these symptoms so they can go back to having great relations again. Because it's a great sadness. I mean, women mourn the loss of their libido. They, they mourn the loss of their relationship. And, and, and they're scared that very often their partner may be looking elsewhere because it's unnatural. And in fact, we did a survey of men last year as well. And over 80% of them said that they were utterly frustrated. And they very often feel rejected. And the women don't mean to reject them, but they just don't know how to communicate. And so we have, we've got little publications for men. I've made little films for men so we can open up the conversations. We can get the women in a, to make it safe for them to open the conversations and get the men to help them so that they feel supported through their journey and they do it together. And then they can come out of it together going back to having a great relationship. And it's a time very often when your kids have gone maybe to university or they've left home, maybe you've got a little bit more leisure time and you can have that sexy time with your partner again if you feel like it, if you feel well enough. I wanna to talk to you more about men actually. Um, but before I do, just is your, is your program of work, are you finding that women are regaining their libido and getting their sex lives back? Oh, absolutely. Is it possible with uh, menopause? Yep, what happens because you feel very often when you've got low levels of nutrients, women describe themselves as being switched off from the waist downwards. Well, getting your nutrients back into an optimum range just wakes everything up again. Yeah. And the departments in your body that have closed down because you're in economy mode wake up again. So that's really good. If you've got a dry vagina, we help with that too so that you can repair the tissues. You get more of the cells that make the mucus in the vagina and the elasticity in the walls of the vagina and your urethra. Some people have bladder problems as well. So all of those cells repair and it's a good time again. And you can, you can be confident that you don't, when you cough, you don't wet yourself because you've got thinning tissues. And when you try and have penetration, you don't get so pained or even in some cases bleed because your tissues are wrecked. So it's really important. And women going into the workplace, brain fog goes within probably three or four weeks. And so they get clarity again. They can go back to doing what they're doing. They're more confident in meetings. They don't have to worry about having a, a terrible hot flush and running out the room or losing their train of thought. It's just women have a right to this. You know, we, we don't work all our lives and give, give, give to our family, our partner, our kids in the workplace to end up as a wobbling wreck, not knowing what to do and literally cleaning up. I mean, I have so many women on a regular basis approach me who are suicidal. Do you know, and how sad is that? And it's completely needless. And I get very upset when I see women in such a state. I get very angry when I see the fact that the medical profession are not implementing 
these tens of thousands of published medical research papers, just the same as I am. Do you know, it's unnecessary. And there's such an agenda for drugs and hormones. And it shouldn't be like that. Women have a right to know that they have choices at the time of the menopause and that they can be in charge of their journey. They just need to know exactly what to do. It isn't magic. They do need to make some changes to their diet and their lifestyle. But a lot of it is really enjoyable. And some of it's only short term while they get themselves back into good shape. And once they've done that, they can return to having a bit of chocolate, glass of wine. It's not going to be a problem in the long term. But in the short term, they need to learn to meet their needs and they need to clean up their act. It's a bit like a detox and a refuel all at once. Well, it is, isn't it? It is like yeah. a detox and a refuel. It's just like, it's a resetting really, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's just so great. And I, I get letters from men saying that they got back the girl they married. You know, it's just amazing. It's right. just okay. I want to talk about men because I think it's a really important subject. And I know, I think pretty sure you did a piece in the Daily Mail about this recently. Um, but, you know, a lot of men, they feel really disillusioned. They feel unimportant. They feel a bit left out, a bit useless, a bit confused. They don't really understand what's going on. They think, yeah, like you said, they've lost their lover. They've lost the, the young, vibrant girl that they fell in love with. And they don't know what to do. And because I think menopause has been such the white elephant for so long, we women have been quite ashamed of it or embarrassed about it or don't want to admit to it because what it means is I'm old and it's the end of my life. <laughs> we don't know how to have the conversations with our men about this. So how can we begin to talk to men? How can we help men understand? How can they be part of the journey and have it be a positive experience? Well, I think first of all, I think when a woman's feeling completely lost, and she really does buy into the fact that it's the beginning of the end. She doesn't want to talk about it because she's too scared. She's afraid to make ways to make it even worse. But when women come to understand that this is the, it's just a transition and that they can come at the end feeling great again, then they're more likely to open the conversation. We, as I said, we've got little tools, we've got little films, we've got the little publication, Every Man's Guide to Menopause, which, just tells men what women would like them to know. And that's basically that this isn't going to go on forever, that this isn't really me, I'm going through a transition. And if I'm argumentative and feeling anxious and a shadow of my former self, it's because I need help and support. And I don't, I'm not really opposing you, I just can't help myself. And I think that when men understand, the same as with PMS, when they understand that this is just it's a condition if you had a broken ankle your partner would be there helping you hobble along mm -hmm. and so you just need to communicate that this is you're in trouble that you, you're getting help that it's only going to take a few months and that you'll be back to your normal self again and you just need some help and support maybe you need to delegate a few things if you're feeling overwhelmed and stressed and usually partners are only too willing to step in and give you a back massage or just make you dinner or do some shopping or perhaps do the hoovering or whatever it is to help you so you can go off and do your relaxation. You can spend a bit more time focusing on yourself because you do need to do that for a few months to get yourself back to being in better shape. And once you've done that, then it's a win-win situation because not only will you feel better, he or she will feel better because you're together again in harmony and you're on the same page and you did it together. And I think that's really important. I love that. And I think he really just need, I think you're absolutely right. He needs to know that this is, this is a blip of time. I love your optimism and, and at, not just optimism. You have proof in this, that it's just a few months because if you really do get that, the right support and really do change your diet and well, more than just the diet, the whole plan that you have in place, if you really do do that, you really are only on a, a few month journey. It doesn't have to be 10 years. No, and also the other thing that's amazing is during that few months, you're learning how to look after yourself in the long term. You don't realize you're doing that. But I remember doing a book signing at Menopause the Musical when I was in Australia and I was standing in the foyer and I was watching literally hundreds and hundreds of women walk past me and listening to their conversations. And they thought that when the menopause had gone, they were on safe ground. 
well, I've got news for you. You know, you're never going to have naturally occurring estrogen in your body again unless you put it there because your ovaries have packed up and you're not going to get your nutrients into an optimum range by magic. You've got to learn how to do it. And if you don't, there's only one way you're going and that's downhill because your systems like your heart and your brain and your bones are not going to weather the long term unless you give them a helping hand. So by coming to this to help to overcome symptoms and learning about how you do that, women are helping themselves in the long term and they're helping everything from the health system because obviously if every woman fell over, then we absolutely bankrupt the health system. We're helping our partners, our families because we're gonna be there healthily to be loved and adored by our family and our friends. And we can embrace life and have a great time. And I think that's, that's the important thing. And that's my goal for the long term, to have a community where women can find all the experts. I think what you're doing is amazing, Katie, to bring together experts so that women can learn from your student point of view, because you want to learn. You're gonna be helping women literally all over the world to know how they can get themselves out of this pickle called menopause. Yeah, no, I'm a total student. I'm loving this. I'm, 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 even though I'm hosting all of the interviews, I, I'm gonna have to actually go back and listen to them all again and make notes <laughs> and create my own plan. And- uh, Well, you can come on my bootcamp. Well, I will be doing, <laughs> I was just about to say, I'm gonna be doing your bootcamp as well because I think it just sounds absolutely amazing. Um, yeah. yeah, absolutely amazing. We have got a couple of questions come through in the Q&A and I did actually forget to say, everybody on the Zoom live here, um, you can type in questions. There's a little Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. So if you have any questions for Marion, you can. I've got a couple here. If you're watching on the Facebook live, you can type in your questions on the Facebook live and I'm sure when Marion has time, she won't mind going back into that space and answering your questions. But we won't be answering them today. Uh, well, not, not live here now. Uh, so Jean has asked, are you aware of any studies? By the way, Jean, <laughs> Jean has been on every single interview since yesterday morning. <laughs> she's asking questions. She's like, like <laughs> so she's like, I've got access to all these experts. I am <laughs> and I love it. Good on you, Jean. Um, Jean's part of the school of self love community as well. And she's really active on all of my Facebook lives. So <laughs> this is wonderful, Jean. Um, are you aware of any studies being done on childless women for menopausal symptoms? Are they expected to have the same symptoms as mothers? Um, I'm not aware of any studies that have been done, but I think that you normally follow your mother's menopause. So if your mum had an early menopause, then you're likely to have one. And equally, if she went into menopause later, then that's likely to happen to you. The fact that you've got your ovaries and you got the same reproductive system, whether you've had babies or not, shouldn't change the fact that you go through menopause. You may go through menopause in a slightly different way. You, in a way, you might be slightly better off because you haven't given out all the nutrients over time but to babies and breastfeeding. But then again, you may have been a dieter or you may have been stressed or on a bad diet. So I don't think there's been any research to be perfectly honest, but you can, whether you've had children or not, you can still get yourself back into great shape and learn how to, which tools are good for you so that you can overcome your symptoms. Yeah, yeah. This has actually been a really powerful um, process of learning for me the last couple of days because, um, and it will continue, because my mum died at 49 and I don't know if she ever, I don't know, I have a vague recollection of her getting some hot flushes-ish, but I don't really know how far into the menopause she was but what I do believe she was she was clinically depressed and I actually my intuition my sense is that she was more depressed because she was having hormonal shit yeah. and she actually took her own life oh. and I wonder if if it had if she had the support like you're providing with your program, if she'd had that support around her hormones and the shift and was changing her diet, because I know, I know that she was relying on caffeine and wine to, to boost her. I, I know that was like her crutch. She wasn't all about the healthy diet and eating estrogen rich foods and so on. And I have a feeling that if she'd had that level of support instead of just antidepressants, 
I wonder if her story might have been a little bit different. I'm sure you're right, because having treated women with PMS for all these years, and obviously lots of women who were really depressed. Mm. In fact, I can remember one woman in the early days who'd taken antidepressants for 22 years. And after six weeks on my menopause, on my PMS program, rather, she, I'd spoken to her after four weeks and she was feeling quite a lot better. And two weeks later, she phoned me back and she was screaming down the phone and I didn't, couldn't understand what she was saying. And she realized that she didn't need to take those antidepressants for all those years, that by changing her diet and lifestyle and, and getting her nutrients into an optimum range, she felt well again. And she didn't even remember bringing up her children. And I sat at my desk and I cried. I could cry. Yeah. Because I feel so sad hearing the story about your mom, because I'm sure I don't know her individual case, but there are so many women who don't need to feel like that, who can feel better. And that's why I'm absolutely passionate about doing this, no matter what, for, to leave some kind of legacy so that women know that they can get through this and they can reclaim their well-being. They don't have to go into that black hole. No, absolutely. And it's one of the reasons why I've put this series together, because A, I wanted to get educated partly because I didn't have mum to talk to. You know, I didn't have that maternal figure and suddenly I've got 19 maternal figures. All, all <laughs> advice. I've had some amazing conversations. I've been in tears on the phone to them while we were preparing for this. You know, I'm like, this is what I need. I needed, I needed sisterhood. I needed support. I needed a maternal wise voice to tell me what, not just professionally what I can do, you know, around my nutrition and so on, but just to give me that, the hope and the inspiration that this is the beginning of the next half of your life. Um, and, and, I've, and I put it together because I really believe that, you know, my mum didn't need to die. I really think that antidepressants clearly weren't doing the job because if they were, she wouldn't have taken her life. And that there could have been more support for her. And, and this information, if this had been available 20 years ago, I think it would have been a very different story. And but the uh, thing is, it was available 20 years ago. That's the crying shame, but she didn't know about it, you know? And that's why I'm so absolutely bent on making sure people know about this because the medical papers did exist and the doctors are not telling you about them because they're not educated. And that's the ridiculous situation. And it shouldn't, it shouldn't be allowed to be that way, but it is for some bizarre reason. And so here we are, women have to help themselves. And, but they have to be able to sift through because the internet has got so much information. It's great in some ways, but on the other ways, it's information overload. And so what I do is I bring together all the science-based tools so that you've got a whole basket full of them and you can choose which ones work for you as an individual depending on your symptoms. And that's the most important thing. Women like your mom, for the most part, don't need to suffer. Certainly doing the natural approach can either completely help them to overcome their symptoms or significantly so that they can manage and enjoy life, maybe taking some medication. But mostly, I never tell patients to come off medication. I send them back to their doctor, but I can't remember any patients who stayed on antidepressants after doing my program because they felt well again. Hooray, hallelujah, I love that. Actually, we've got a message here from Angela saying sisterhood and support so important in the menopause katie and marion yes from angela cafe woman yes. and she asks a question uh what foods are high in estrogen so the foods that are richest in estrogen are soy-based products and uh flax seeds or linseeds and red clover so that's not so much in a food but it comes in a supplement form um, there's one particular one called Promensal, which we use, which has been through clinical trials. And um, that helps to replace the naturally occurring estrogen. But it's not a magic pill. And the thing that I'm always battling with in my group is that women are looking for a magic pill. There is no magic pill. You can take something that will help. But if you are serious about getting yourself back into really good shape, you've got to have a bit of each slice of my pie. It's not just a magic pill. And that's the really important thing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I know, Marion, you are giving away, and I will put it, everybody that's um, opted into this series has already received this link, but this video will be available to loads more people who haven't opted in. Um, so I'll put the link 
when I save this onto YouTube, I put the link there to your free nutritional assessment that you created. Yes. What is that? Can you tell us about the nutritional assessment? Yeah. So again, Mother Nature and her wily wisdom has given us the ability to detect nutritional deficiencies because many of them are reflected in our skin, our hair and our nails. So whether you've got red patches at the side of your nose or cracking at the side of your lips or your nails are ridgy or your hair's brittle or whatever it is, there's some reason. And so it's an assessment you can go through and a checklist and then there's a whole load of information about which foods are rich in those nutrients that you're likely to be short of so you can make your diet more nutrient dense because that's the first step where do we learn about that we don't learn about it in school even do you know and we've all got this body we come we come without a manual how are we supposed to know do you know your washing machine comes with a manual how come your body doesn't and you're supposed to go through life and have babies and breastfeed and Look after older relatives and go through all sorts of stressful situations and you're just not taught how to deal with that. Yeah, yeah, it's so true. I've always said, why do I have to go to someone else to tell me what's going on with my body? It's my body, I should know. But we don't. Yeah, we never, yeah. never been taught. We're not in that society. In fact, we're in a society now. I look at, you know, my son who's going to be 11 this week and they, we haven't been taught to... to go within and, 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 and learn from ourselves, we, we actually go to Google. You know, we're, we're, the answer is somewhere else and we're wanting more answers to more things more quickly these days, aren't we? But you know what? I think when you're in bad nutritional shape, you're so in your body, you're so stuck in your body because of the pain that you can't ask the universe. You're not spiritually aware. You know, you can't do anything other than survive. So I want to take people from that position to being able to thrive so that they are open to all sorts of new possibilities because women have got so many amazing skills and we have, as mature women, we have so much to offer the world. And how can we do that if we're crippled with our symptoms? So my gift, I suppose, is that I can help women to feel better and then people like you can help them to open up like spring flowers so that they can become more spiritual, they can love themselves, and that they can go on and do all sorts of... They can ask themselves, well, what do I really want to be doing at this stage in my life? I've got a blank canvas. I can do something else. Well, that's right. And I think we talked about this, didn't we, didn't we when we were chatting the other day, that you're like the warm-up to the work that I do with women. Yes. <laughs> you're kind of getting them, you know, back on an even keel, back on track, feeling healthy and optimistic again and then I take them forward <laughs> yeah because how can you love yourself if you're up all night you know and you're crippled with symptoms and you're getting fat and you don't feel sexy I mean that's not a recipe for love no. so when you come back to first base and you're renewed and refueled then you're ready for anything and all possibilities and so that's I think that's how this works and I always see it as being an amazing collaboration so going forward I'd love to talk to you more about some of the experts that you've got today who'd like to collaborate going forward because I think it is sisterhood. It is something that we need to do together no. to spread the word and to help women to be their best, to be their best selves. So we can do, we always hear awful things happening around the world, but I think we need to do wonderful things in the world to redress the balance. And I think we can do that as women. High five to that. I love it. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. Okay, well, we haven't got any more questions. So I think, Marion, I would love if, if we could just wrap up and if you could share what's the biggest message that you'd like to leave everybody with today? I think the biggest message is that your dreams and everything that you wish for yourself is possible. Mm. And if you don't feel, if you think that's a wild exaggeration, you need to just open up to the possibility of looking after yourself. Just make yourself important for the next few months and drink up the information. Either get some self-help tools like my 14-day program or a book or a couple of my boot camp. Do something for yourself because it's not going to get better by itself. And you'll find that you will be so much better than you can imagine and it will put you in a really great place. And that's what I wish for every single woman, that she just finds herself again and gets back the energy 
and her, her drive in life and can paint that blank canvas with all the things that are going to make her joyous and happy. Oh my God, I want to like high five you again. <laughs> That's brilliant. Thank you so much, Marion. Thank you for my mum. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for giving me the platform. I, I, I love being part of this. Oh, hold on. We've got another comment. Angela has said, thanks for doing this. Great interview. Great support for women. Thank you, Angela. So glad you love it. And uh, yeah, we love having you. And thank you, Marion. You're just an absolute rock star. And mm -hmm. I think you know what you're doing. And I can't wait to get on your boot camp. <laughs> can't uh, wait to model. And I will be very vocal about it. Once I'm on there and in it, I'll be like... <laughs> telling the world <laughs> i can't wait okay thank you so much and uh and we'll stay in touch okay good night right. this is serious okay bye, bye thank you lots of love go and enjoy beautiful new york today I love you. <laughs> see you later bye, bye.